HR reporting and analysis is mostly based on data around employees. I have published several templates and spreadsheets about HR metrics and KPIs and dashboards. In this video series, I want to take each HR metric or KPI and explain how to calculate them in Excel using formulas. We'll start this with the most basic one, how many employees are there in our company? In this video, I will do a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to calculate that using formulas in Excel. The formula we choose will depend on how our input data is structured and what it represents. I'm gonna use four common scenarios that I've come across and provide solutions to those four. I would love to hear from you if your company uses one of these four scenarios or do you have something different? Please provide your thoughts in the comment section below. Now let's get started. So let's start with the first scenario. The scenario is that the data set that we have been given is only active employees. So basically they are doing the cleanups and excluding people who have already left and they are only giving us employees who are active at the moment. So this makes our job much, much easier. This is the simplest scenario where all we have to do is to now count this number of employees. So I have only three columns, ID, which is a unique identifier of an employee. So there cannot be any duplicates in this column, uh, meaning the same value cannot repeat. The employee name, very obvious there. Start date is the date when the employee started employment always convert your data into an Excel table. So I have selected this data with my mouse and I'm gonna hit Control T, which Excel will then ask me, what do I want to do? My table has headers because I already have the row four here having my column name. So I'm just gonna say, okay. And now Excel converts this into a table and it will apply a style, which depending on the color theme of your Excel installation, it may look a little different. So I'm just gonna choose one of these options here. And now it is an Excel table. Key recommendation that I have is always name your tables. By default, Excel will name like table one, table two, table three, whatever. So it looks like I already have done 15 tables in this Excel file. And so it's asking me to name it as table 16. It's named it as table 16, but I'm gonna go in and change this to say, okay, let's say I wanna call this employee one, um, and this is the first scenario, so I'm gonna just call it one underscore one. It doesn't matter, you can name it however you would prefer for this table to be. Now the next step is to go and write a formula. So how many employees are there? So I'm gonna go and say equals, so that's how we write a formula, always put in equals, and then do a count, and Excel will give you a lot of count functions. So I'm gonna use the count A function, and the count A function counts the number of cells which are not empty. So I'm gonna open parenthesis, and I'm going to choose this column. And when I selected it, you will see that Excel is putting in a nice, much more readable name range here. So basically it's T underscore M underscore one underscore one. That's the table that I named. And the ID is the column. And I'm gonna close parenthesis and hit okay. So what has happened here is Excel is now ca counting how many non-blank cells are there in this column. And now let's say tomorrow your data set has changed to maybe another employee has come up. So I'm gonna call him you know, call, call that ID as 11, and I'm going to just now name this with some name, uh, let's say Jack, hit enter, and then I can put in the start date, but you notice that even without me putting any of this data, Excel is already saying there are 11 employees because we pointed this formula to this column. As long as there is an ID, it will count it as a number of employee. So let me remove this 11. Now what happens is it'll show only 10. So the important point to remember here is that we are checking for non-blank cells. So if there is an any value, whether it's correct or accurate or not, valid or not, if there is anything populated in that cell, 
Excel will count it. So this is the simplest approach. And so if you have a list of active employees, then just follow this method with the count a function. Now for the second scenario, we have, let's say they have given us a file with both active and future employees. So basically people who have not yet started, right? Because their start date is here, they have not started yet. And in that case, how do you make sure that you exclude those who have not started, right? So let's write a formula using a count if function this time. Count if compared to count a is different because it allows us to put a condition on our account. So I'm going to say count if open parenthesis choose the start date column this time because I want to put a condition on the start date column. If the employee start date is in the future, then I don't want to count it. So the opposite way to think about that is if the start date is in the past or today, then I want to count it. So my condition here is when I put a comma and then I can go and do double quotes less than equals double quote. So this is telling Excel that I want to do a less than or equals and then put an ampersand. And then now we need to say today, right? So if today's date is September 21st or so, then we can type in that date, but we want it to be dynamic. So tomorrow it should become September 22nd. And so there is a function in Excel called today. So I'm doing today, open parenthesis, close parenthesis. That's how the today function works. So now we have done today. I'm going to close my count if and then hit OK. So now you see that it is saying there are 10 employees because all the 10 have start dates in the past. So let's say, for example, employee number 10, I'm going to change the date to October 1st, 2021, which is in the future when I'm recording the video. So uh, now what happens is it'll become nine because this employee Jones is now excluded from number of active employees in our calculation because that employee is hasn't started yet. Now for the third scenario, let's say our data set has all the employees, including both who are active and act inactive, future dated, everything. All the employees are in this um, data set that we have been given, but we are lucky because they already have given us a status column. Um, this is also common where that in the database, they've actually pre-calculated the status of an employee. So you may receive the data in this format where every employee will have a status and whether the employee is currently active or not. So in this scenario, we will still use a count if, and this time we don't have to worry about the dates piece. We just can say, okay, count all the cells where in the status column, comma, active. And we want to put double quotes around active and close parenthesis. And now it'll say nine because there is one inactive employee. And let's say if I make Irvin also inactive, now you'll see that it changes to eight employees is the active employee. So this is how it is dynamic based on the data that we provided. Please note that I'm using the active and inactive values here, for example, but in your data set, they may use yes, no, and other type of flags to represent whether an employee is currently employed or not. So accordingly, you can change the count if function with the proper corresponding value, which represents active employees. Now let's move on to the last scenario. So this one is a little bit more complicated where we are given two different tables of information. So one is all the people who have joined the company, right? So whether they are currently active or not, doesn't matter. They have started at some point. So they have all been employees at some point. And then on the other side, we have everybody who have left the company. And these two are completely two different data sets that have been given to us. And now we need to calculate using these two, how many active employees are there. So this is a little bit more involved, but what we can do is first count how many people have joined the company, right? So I'm gonna use a count if function, just like we did before, count the start date column and make sure that everybody is, start date is less than or equals, double quotes, ampersand, 
today and ampersand is important otherwise excel will throw you an error so and close parenthesis and now i know that there are 10 employees who joined the company at some point and how we need to now remove these two employees and actually we need to employ remove only this employee because they have already left the company the october 1st 2021 exit date this employee has not left the company yet have given the notice um you know it's still about 10 days away from today when i'm recording the video october 1st is 10 days away so the employee has not left yet and so we want to keep this employee in our active employee base one thing i forgot to mention is that the tables are structured similarly where we have an id and the employee name here we have the start date here we have the exit date that's the only difference exit date is when the employee is scheduled to leave or has already left the company now in go back to the formula and now what i'm going to do is to subtract those who have already left so i'm going to do minus space count if this time i'm going to go to the exit date column and now i'm going to say this should be less than or equal to ampersand today also because only if the exit date is today or in the past then i want to subtract that employee as somebody who has left the company so hit enter so now it will say nine um, hypothetically let's say this last employee one adams has left in 2020 instead of 2021 so i'm going to change it and now you will see that this employee is also being excluded from our active employee base because the employee has already left the company so this is how we can use two counter functions and subtract to get the number of active employees in a company and there are many ways we can make it more complicated by making sure that validating the data that we have how do we know that the employees listed in this levers table um, are also in the joiners table we're not validating any of that so we're going to start we're starting with something simple here and making an assumption that the data that have been given to us is accurate and if in your scenario you're dealing with certain kinds of uh, data quality issues i would love to hear from you in the comment section so i can do another video about how we can use formulas to handle errors in the data or put in some validations in place to overcome those potential errors it is all feasible within excel but since this is more of a beginner type of calculation video i'm going to keep it simple in the next video i will talk about another hr metric and explain how to calculate that in excel Please visit inzara.com slash HR to know more about Excel templates and tutorials around HR. Thank you very much for watching.